this is Snaily Snail, and today I thought I'd share with you some of the Boston restaurants that I really enjoy eating at. I'm going to preface this by saying it's been a very, very long time since I've been in Boston. So when I was doing my research, most of the places that I like have closed. I'll start off with Chinatown because that's where I grew up. Um, that's like the places that my parents would take me when we did go out like once a year. So before I was born, Chinatown used to be a red light district. And then some guy moved in there and the restaurant is now called Empire Garden. That was like the start of Chinatown. Someone else's family who would take me out and they usually pick Empire Garden or Heilam Moon. It's usually dim sum for Empire Garden. Heilam Moon is like if you have people coming from out of town and you need parking. When we have out of town visitors, we usually just go to any place in Chinatown. My parents really don't go anywhere. Um, the yoke. My brother and I, we don't really eat with our parents. So yeah, those are kind of the only two places that they really go to. We're usually that family who brings Maine lobsters to the airport and then we'll cook it whenever we get to the destination. I really like Empire Garden just for their fried shrimp rolls. Those are the best. I usually order a couple dishes of the fried shrimp rolls. Heilamun, I don't think they do it. So it's just like, whatever comes, I, I'll eat it. They have the generic dim sum dishes, which is all I really care about. The next place, Whale and I, we used to go to this a lot. It's called the Q Restaurant. It's a Mongolian hot pot place. The wait though, it's so long. I really do not recommend you bring anyone who is not physically fit because you have to wait in the bar area for a very long time. It can be like 30, 40 minutes sometimes. If they're not used to standing for a long time, please don't bring them here. I don't think you can do reservations here. So you usually come in, you put your name down. Hopefully there's like an opening. If there's not, they'll tell you 15 to 20 minutes. It really means a lot more than that. But the whale really loves their hand pulled noodles and they do like a really good spicy broth. Ordering the meat is kind of confusing because I feel like they should have pictures. <laughs> All right, next I have two bubble tea places. First one is Royal Tea. This one is in like the basement. The boba is really good here. But the problem that I have is the line, it's like a really narrow door. And then you have like a line that's just like taking up the whole one side and then poor person who's like, you know, having to keep the door open. And then the problem with that is that if they mess up your order, it takes forever for them to fix anything. Usually we go to Kung Fu Tea if we don't want to wait. Kung Fu Tea is very consistent with their bubble tea. The only thing is, if you're going to the Chinatown location, be careful with the sugar levels. They are so high compared to the other Kung Fu teas that I've been to. You have to like knock it down at least like 25, 50% even to get regular sugar levels at the other Kung Fu tea places. There's Crave Chinatown. So Crave Chinatown is a fried chicken place. The wait is very long. Like I'm not talking about the wait to get seated. This is the wait to get the food. So I think it's like a decent place if you're taking someone there and you just like want to talk. And then I had to ask some friends because some of the places I used to go to are closed. This one is a recommendation from my friend and they said Jean's Chinese Flatbread Cafe. I think it's Xi'an food. It's legit. Way back in the day, Kakro and I, we would finish up work at the Boston Commons and we would head out with our tips and we would go to fall pasture, which is a fall place. And we would finish our food and then we'd go to Tido for boba. It, it was like one of the very, very few boba places. So don't judge us. If you have vegetarian friends, I would bring them to fall pasture. Fall pasture took a dip for us after a Buzzfeed article came out. And then suddenly they were just like, always packed and then the quality just wasn't as good so we stopped going there. The whale and I, we used to pick up our boba first and then we would go to Saigon Sandwich which is like a banh mi place and then because it's like still crispy and stuff we head over to Tufts Medical Center. If you go up to the fourth floor 
their seats there and they have a cafe. I don't know like what their visitor policy was. Yeah, it's hard to find seating. So that's why we went to Tufts Medical, especially in the winter time. And then once we're done and we clean up after ourselves, please clean up after yourself. We head over to Boston Common and we go to Thinking Cup. And at Thinking Cup, we always get the cheesecake. I personally think it's one of the best cheesecakes. Another place, this one's in Dorchester, Savin Hill, Ballet, they do amazing banh mi too. And then if you go to the South End, I like Rome Pizza just for their fries. The fries are crispy on the outside and soft on the inside, and they're not super thick like steak fries, but they're thicker than the average fry. And then I would have said to go to Masa for brunch and maybe dinner, but they're permanently closed, so there goes that. But the yolk did recommend Alibaba, which is a Mediterranean place. He says that it's like his favorite cheap eats type of place because the half menu can feed a regular person and that the full like chicken platter, that is like three to four chicken thighs. Growing up, this was a place that we would go to. It's called Boloco, Boston Local Company. And it's, I think, a better version of Chipotle because they have so many more options. And I think guac is free, I don't know, but they have a tapping screen. So you don't even have to talk to anyone. And then if you're in the like symphony hall to like Newberry area, <laughs> that's like a kind of big area, like close to Prudential, Cat Girl loves Santoka for ramen. I honestly never had ramen in Boston. I tried it when they came here to Chicago, but I think we have some better ramen options. Then there's also pho basil, pho basil, is great for pho. The problem is there is a long line. Same for Santoka. Pho basil is always packed though. I honestly have never had a bad dish here. This is not the place where you would bring several people, take up all the chairs and be like, I'm waiting for my party. This is like a, you eat and you get out, okay? And then afterwards when you're done, I would recommend maybe stopping by Georgetown Cupcakes or Cafe Bene. Cafe Bene is like Korean, Bingsu, like desserts, bakery. Another place that Cat Girl recommended is Zuma Sushi. It's on the like second floor of the Four Seasons Hotel. There's also the Barking Crab in the seaport area. So I come here for the lobster mac and cheese and Whale likes their fish and chips. We have had their crab, but it's a lot of work, so we don't really order it. This is where we discovered our favorite beer, which used to be called Lord Hobo Hobo Life, but now it's just called Life. I don't know how, but it tastes like mango. And they have their own area in the seaport now. They're turning seven years on June 19th, so happy birthday, Lord Hobo. So I moved out of home and I moved to the Brighton area. I don't think you can go wrong with most of the places in Brighton or Alston, especially the places on Harvard Ave. But the whale and I, we were regulars at Twin Donuts, which you, like you really can't miss it. It has like this big neon sign that says Twin Donuts. Um, they're open pretty early, like 6 a.m. and then they close at 3 p.m. Their donuts, the glazed donuts are really good. They're so fluffy, but like sometimes it's hit or miss. So I feel like you should just buy one donut, see if it's good <laughs> that day. And then if it's really good, go back in line and buy like half a dozen. Um, I usually order the Western omelet. The whale usually gets coffee and some sort of sandwich. It's a diner. Because it's a popular place on the weekends for brunch, it's really hard to find a seat if you go during like brunch time. And it was only because I think we're like known for tipping a lot and just like coming very often. They would always make sure to prioritize us for seating. So we usually go to Twin Donuts on the weekends. The same staff also work at Cafe Mirror and you go there, the menu is the same, everything should be the same. So you can also check that out. Sometimes when I'm on my way back from Pho Basil, I'll go to Yisong Bakery, like if I'm on the bus, and I will pick up every single box of their almond crepes, uh, like the puffed pastry. They're so good. I have no shame. I will pick up like five, six boxes of these, and I probably will finish them all by myself. They're called Xingren Tian Cheng Shu. I'm probably butchering the Mandarin. The whale is like a big fan of cream cakes but we usually go to Tu Le Jour for those. And then Gong Cha for Boba. Gong Cha is like a little bit less basic than Kung Fu, but 
The problem is I feel like they always get my order wrong. Thankfully, Gong Cha doesn't always have a line. So it's not so awkward that you have to like go back in. They're like one of the very few places that do brown sugar ginger boba, which is what I drink. <laughs> like no one else drinks it. It's just me. Like even the cashier kind of gets confused. Like, what'd you say? <laughs> yeah, you cannot edit the sugar levels on most brown sugar drinks. But like usually there's some place to sit, even to Le Jour, there's usually some seating there. So it's not too bad. Uh, Yison Bakery is like one of those, you, you go in, you go out. Okay, so Cat Girl likes Shabu Zen. I like Q more than Shabu Zen. But there's a Shabu Zen in Chinatown and there's one in Alston. So like, I, I don't think there, there are too many hot pot places though. Another place I like is Bangkok Bistro. Bangkok Bistro is across the street from the laundromat that I used to go to. So when I'm waiting for my laundry to dry or get clean, we'll just order pad thai or seared meat. My friend recommended 10 second noodles for their pickled cabbage fish noodle soup. I have never tried it, sounds interesting. I think Alston Brighton is generally like a good place to go for food because they're mostly college kids like or like recent graduates or working class people. That's where all like the new food stuff comes. Most of the food scene is moving out of Boston. So that's why I'm going to include some like greater Boston areas like Somerville. So I lived in Somerville for a little bit, like right across from Tufts. I think this was like the summer before my last semester of college. I really like Papa Gallo. They were in South Boston, but that place is temporarily closed. Yeah, it's like a really big walking mall type of area. That's how I would describe Assembly Row. And I think it's supposed to appeal to younger people. I really appreciate their free chips with the salsa. I think we both like order an entree and that's kind of it. Papagayo is like a pretty chill place. Another place that has been recommended was Dak Zen. They do good Thai food. The Yolk really likes Oliveira Steakhouse. This is a Brazilian steakhouse. So usually what they do is like they come around with a skewer and they cut off pieces of meat. You just like tell them when to stop. During COVID, we found out that you can just straight up order the steaks from Brazilian steakhouses. So for example, the whale and I, we really like picanha, but we were just like, I don't know where to get that. Fogo de Chao actually has it. So you can just ask them for the meat itself. And um, it's so much cheaper. It's so much cheaper than if you were to buy it at the grocery store. I remember during COVID, it was like $4 for a big slab. So it was $8 for the two of us, but I think now it's it's probably double. So it's like $8, so 16. I think it's still a very good price. I don't know if Boston does this. I think it became a thing because of like the supply chain problem and they were really concerned about like all the meat going bad. So they were just like, might as well sell it. So that's one way of getting cheap quality steak. A friend also recommended Far Out Ice Cream. This is New Zealand styled ice cream in Brookline. Uh, it's a, I think it's like on the green line. New Zealand styled ice cream. It's basically frozen fruit and then they just like blend the crap out of it until it turns into a soft serve. So it's like a healthier alternative. The next recommendations are in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Friend recommended Yumega Aru Kara just for their cold spicy udon. Next, Koreana for Korean barbecue. And then they also recommended Christina's homemade ice cream. Back in the day, again, broke college students. The whale and I, we would go to Felipe's Taqueria. There's a line, not all the time. It's not as crazy as like pho basil. It can get crazy, but usually I think we go around like 3 p.m., 2 p.m. And what I really like is they melt the cheese on the tortilla and then they like steam it in a way that it just like melts on there and it's warm and it's like, it's just so inviting. Um, and then what happens is you go down the line, you pick out everything that you want. They get like cut it up in front of you. And then at the end, you like magically get some sort of receipt where they supposedly tallied up all the stuff that you added in there. But I honestly, I don't know if they actually counted. Uh, I have heard of some people recommending Anna's Taqueria. I think it's also in Cambridge. I think I like Felipe's more. There's also Mike's Pastry for cannolis. I'm only recommending the Cambridge one because that one accepts card. So there is modern pastry that's right next door to Mike's Pastry in the North End, which is like where 
all the Italian food is. I think they're like just about the same. The only place I don't recommend for cannolis is Italy in the Prudential area because they leave the cart out and there are flies swarming all around it. You do not want a fly touching your cannoli shell, okay? That's disgusting. I also have had the ricotta, um, like, you know, the cream that they put on the inside of the cannoli, like not taste as good in the Cambridge one. So it's like, eh, you know, uh, depends on the day. Another place for dessert in Cambridge is Zenekins. They do this like Belgian waffle, when we went there, it's literally like two women working off of like four waffle irons, but they make amazing waffles. Okay, and then next for Quincy, Massachusetts. Um, a friend recommended Chaji Creamery. But it's supposed to be one of the better Asian soft serves. If you want dim sum, they recommended Ming Seafood Restaurant. They were just like, dim sum's not really in Boston Chinatown anymore. But if you do want dim sum, there's Windsor, there's Halo Moon, there's... Um, Empire Garden, but Ming Seafood restaurant seems promising. I read some of the reviews. It could be like a culture barrier with some of them. I don't know, but they recommended it. They liked it. So I was like, okay, cool. Another dim sum place is Joyful Garden in Watertown. I think this one's in the mall. Yeah, so those were all the Boston places that I used to go to or some of my friends have recommended, some that like my brother recommended. I will try to leave everything in the description down below. But I like I don't know if I'll go over the character limit. <laughs> I know my list leans a lot more like Asian cuisine, but that's generally what we eat. We do eat a lot of pho when we go out because it takes hours to prepare. I know I didn't include places in like Rosendale or West Roxbury, but that's also because I never went there. You need to go like all the way to like Forest Hill on the Orange Line and then take all these like weird buses and then try to like figure your out like no no that no thanks so much for watching if you have any recommendations that you want to add just leave them down below i'm pretty sure someone else would appreciate them the whale's like my mongolian people <laughs> Because I, yeah, he's like part mongoloid or something. Green line still sucks. <laughs>